Well, Halloween Kills is out now in theaters and on Peacock. So if you're watching this and haven't seen it yet, let me go back, watch, come back, because we're gonna have a really nice conversation today with Anthony Michael Hall. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you very much. Good to be with you, Ash. You, you've been part of such iconic films. What does it mean to add the Halloween franchise to that, to share the screen with Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode? Oh, it's epic. It feels great. You know, I've had uh, plenty of time with the delay of the film to think about this, but it, it really is meaningful to me because I've never, with the exception of The Dark Knight, Ash, I've never been a part of a big franchise like this. And that was back in 07 when I shot that. So I'm just super pumped. I really am. And I think you know, with the delay of the last year, it's it's really funny. It gave me a lot of time to plug into the fan universe and how big that is. So I was on YouTube a lot, watching fan shows and reaction videos and, and tracking all the responses to the trailers and the test screenings and everything, and just like Halloween fans themselves. So that was a lot of fun for me. Um, so yeah, it means a lot to me. I'm very excited about it because we know we did a great film and it's very audience friendly. It's a real ride, you know, so that, that all combines for a lot of excitement for me. I'm happy about it. When I was a kid, my uh, this is like a very specific story, but I was like sitting in my grandmom's living room and my uncle bust through the window with a Michael Myers mask on. And that oh, was wow. my first like time seeing Michael Myers. It was my uncle. It scared me and my cousin so bad that my cousin has a permanent gray patch on his head that he got when he was like nine. <laughs> <laughs> Your uncle has a wicked sense of humor to say the least, right? He freaked you guys uh, out. Uncle Kevin scared the life out of us, but I'm curious because like, you know, Michael Myers is somebody that's like really freaky to a lot of people growing up. And then you're in turn on set with this guy, you know, as Michael Myers, does that, does it get freaky at all when you just like see him lurking on the set? Yeah, it, it was a little freaky to be honest with you, it was, but Christopher Nelson, the guy who, who creates his look is incredible. He has a whole team. So he would often be around James Jude, who I never even really spoke to during making the film. Uh, we've become friendly since, and he's a great guy. But, you know, during the making of the film, I'll be honest, I was in my own zone, too. I was really excited because I felt David and Danny had given me this real hero's part as Tommy. And it's interesting, if you go back to the 78 film, Tommy's actually bullied, right, by Lonnie. And he's obviously victimized by the babysitter getting killed. And then Jamie's character looks after he and, and Kyle's character, Lindsay Wallace. So it's a nice full arc. So I think what's cool about the new film is that everybody gathers on Halloween night. And... Uh, you know, they're commiserating about having been victims and survivors and the whole thing. And then there's a real turn that happens, right? Everybody decides to unify and fight and to really, you know, to kind of join forces in the community itself. So I think that energy and the way that David sets the movie up, it really propels it forward and gives it such momentum. And then it just takes off. It's a freight train. It's really, there's so much action in this film. There's so much going on. So I think people that love this franchise and this, this character of Myers and, and obviously Lori, they'll be very happy. I think it's a great installment, the 12th in the series. You know? I was definitely like halfway through the movie, I'm like, okay, I understand why it's called Halloween Kills. Because oh, it's in the title. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a few yeah. in there. Um, so Tommy Doyle, he's, he's got like a Rusty Griswold thing going on. You're the, the fourth actor to play him. And he's well, also has like... Title. Yeah. What, <laughs> yeah. And he also has like a multiverse. There's like a bunch of different storylines for Tommy. What were yeah. you told in terms of like what Tommy is, a, what his past is and what he's been up to since 78? You know what, it's interesting because a lot of people have asked me this question the last couple of weeks and we really didn't discuss it, David and I. I think because the screenplay that he and Danny and, and Scott teams, their partner did, it was solid. It was really all there. I mean, everything you see, that opening speech at the beginning, I think one of the things that was really very creative and very very cool that they pulled off was how they were able to thread all those characters, right? From the original to 2018 to this new movie. So I think even though we all have this similar arc of unifying and fighting back and becoming empowered by this, as opposed to just being survivors or victims, that was there for all of us to work with, right? But I also felt, um, I just really felt excited by the way David was, you know, he really saw Tommy as kind of like the eye of the storm, you know, he's leading the town and, and leading the charge. And I just felt, you know, I've never had that kind of a specific kind of hero's part, you know what I mean? So I was really jazzed by that. And because of the fact that it's basic good versus evil, I mean, the stakes, everything is very clear for me. So I just kind of hit the ground running. Um, and there were things that David added in the course of the shoot. Like the bat, for example, that was an idea that he ca that came to him, I think the first or second week. He's like, I think you should have a weapon. I go, cool, let's go for that. But he's such a talented guy. He can go from comedy to drama 
so many great actors in this project and actresses and, and you know, he really carves out time to have ongoing discussions and dialogue with them. And if something doesn't feel right, we can change it. He's also just very inclusive of other people's opinions in the creative process. So he'll get ideas from other crew members, not just us actors. So I think that that's something that it's interesting because I've shared this with a lot of the, the writers that I've been speaking to that he has that in common with John Hughes. John Hughes had all those similar qualities, like a natural writer, a natural filmmaker, uh, but at the same time has this, you know, kind of humility and, and another talent for just listening and staying open to enlarge it, you know? So you might embellish a scene, you might simplify a scene, you might cut things. So I found that really impressive that he was such a cool, easygoing guy that everybody got along with him. You could, he was really accessible throughout the making of the project. And then just how he works too, by just letting things happen too, you know, going beyond what's there in the script. But the screenplay was really so good, Ash, that we didn't have to digress from it too much. You know, it was really right there. Okay, yeah, because I was wondering, you know, it really does kind of become Tommy Doyle's movie. Like you really are, like you said, the eye of it, the eye of the storm. Um, and I was wondering if that like had evolved as you guys were kind of working together. Well, yeah, it did. It actually did evolve. That's a good point because I felt that that energy from him that he wanted me to rise to this occasion and be what you just said. You know what I mean? So I felt that and I felt very empowered by that. The other thing he did, which was really funny, I got to the set and because of my age, my hair just getting whiter now, I just buzzed my hair, you know? So I went for this haircut. When I got there, he goes, I love that haircut. And he goes, I'm gonna cut my hair like that. Next thing he, <laughs> the next day I came to set, he buzzed his hair, it was cool. But he's just a great guy, he really was. I really loved it. And I, I was genuinely a fan of his action and, and Danny's. I loved Danny McBride. So I loved all those shows I did, you know, they were just so talented with the comedy. Um, so just a great experience. And you know, it's a dream job, this one. What's the number one thing you want to see in Halloween Ends? I don't know how much you know about it, but like, what's the number one thing you want to see happen in that movie? Okay, so I'm literally under contract, so I'm not supposed to talk about this, but I really don't know. With respect to the next one, I have no idea. All I know is I got a little bit of intel from David and, and Jamie, because I happened to text David when he was in Venice with Jamie Lee a couple weeks back when the film premiered internationally. And, um, she said something in one of her interviews, which was a clue. I think he gave her the new script for Halloween Ends on the plane there when they were going to Italy. So that's the, the only uh, newsworthy item I can give you. So I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. I I, uh, I wish them all the best though, because I I'm really excited. This is going to be a hard one to top. This movie kicks ass. Yeah, it's like, oh, is Laurie <laughs> is Laurie going to kill Michael? Does it matter? Because does Michael even care about Laurie Strode? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> You got it. You got it. It's right. It's just so interesting how something so basic, this interrelationship, right, has like really intrigued people for a long time. So it's cool. It's really exciting. That's the best part. I think knowing that an audience is then ready for it is, is really fun. How do you think Michael catches up to people so quickly? Like, do you think he's full sprinting when the camera isn't on him? That's a whole other sequel right there. We just see Myers sprinting between just kills. Sprinting. <laughs> Hilarious, Ash. Good question. I think you should save that one for David Gordon Green. <laughs> Um, that's really funny. Yeah, I don't know. You know, one of the things David said in one of the interviews I, I watched of his from a few weeks ago, he said there's actually very little mythology about it. We don't really know that much about him. And that might be part of the trick of it, you know? Like fear itself, it's almost like a contagion. You know, we, we're, we're afraid of this thing we can't see. He's the stalker, he's the predator, he's the boogeyman. But I, it's interesting, but at the same time, how beloved, just as much as Laurie is, you know, Jamie's character. So it's a trip that a franchise that's lasted 43 years. And I'm telling you, when you tap into this fan base, which I'm sure you're aware of, they are serious about it. They are so diehard. They know what every mask looked like. They can tell you about every version, every sequel, you know, the different timelines. So it's been really fun with the delay since last year of kind of plugging into this whole world and seeing what the fans think. So I'm as excited as they are, honestly. I really want to know what the kill count is in this movie versus the other ones. <laughs> That's another question that keeps popping up, Ash. Like, literally, yeah. I was curious about this because I read that you had turned down the second vacation. That's true, right? Well, you know, it's interesting. I did this article, uh, an interview recently, and it, there was a, just a, you know, it was kind of twisted to look like that. I mean, I did regret it. I had an opportunity to do Ferris Bueller and, and, Pretty, in Pink, and Pretty in Pink with Hughes. Yeah. But it was actually kind of his fault in a way because of the career he had given me. I was actually busy on other projects, so I wasn't able to, to do that. And I'm sad about that because I would have, I really did want to work with him again, you know? Um, so the Rusty Connection is also interesting, Ash, because John Hughes got his start in the business I don't know if you've ever seen, did you see the Hughes film, She's Having a Baby with Kevin Bacon and Elizabeth McGovern? Did you ever see that one? I've never seen that. So basically the reason I bring it up is because 
Kevin and, and Elizabeth McGovern were essentially playing with users because at the time he was an ad guy. He was writing copy at an advertising agency. So my point of telling you all this is that he submitted the short story of Vacation to National Lampoon Magazine. And that got picked up and that's where his writing career took off. He was writing short stories for a humor magazine. And then that got turned into Vacation. So it was really kind of in the stars, Ash, how I worked with John, you know, because he had written that first film, which I did. And then, um, and then I went on to meet him and work with him, obviously, in the other three films as a kid, 16 Candles, Breakfast Club, and Weird Signs. That's so cool. I, yeah, I was just curious if like, you're actually the reason why there was a different Rusty and Audrey in every single movie. You know what? I have to tell you, I think I am. Because again, because I was working, I wasn't a lot. I mean, I wasn't available to do the second one, which I think was the European vacation one. So I, I, it is kind of, I'm to blame, I guess, in part. <laughs> to blame her, yeah, but it's kind of a cool thing. If you had to revisit a character, well, you, I guess you've done like a few things like popping up as cameos, things like that. But if you had to like fully revisit a character you've played before, who would, is there anyone you would want to revisit? I would say Tommy Doyle, actually, but I don't know what's going to happen to him. Wink. Wink. <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know. I'm always kind of forward thinking. I'm always thinking about what's ahead, you know? It was really funny when my managers, I'm with a great company called Untitled. So Jason Weinberg and Mitch Mason are my guys. They, they take great care of me. But they put me on the Goldbergs last year, which was great. And the first episode was the spoof of Vacation. And I thought the funniest thing was the writers decided to make Rusty, that's right, the security guard at the front gate at Disneyland. So when that first episode, it was all about Rusty Griswold would not let the Goldbergs into Disneyland because they didn't have their passes or whatever. So that was funny. And then that led to them bringing me back as a guidance counselor. So again, the vacation jokes were, you know, they keep coming. But that was fun. I mean, that was the only time I've done that actually to revisit it. So Rusty wound up being a security guard at Disneyland. It's so hard to like think about rebooting John Hughes stuff, but they are doing like a Home Alone. They mm -hmm. have done like a newer vacation. Is there anything that you would like, that you've done that you were like, I would not want to see that rebooted? You know, the thought of The Breakfast Club gets mentioned sometimes. And I think, again, because of John's writing, it's it's a legit concept, the possibility of that being remade. I think it might in some, some future date, but it's been very humbling. That movie in particular of all of the three that I did with John or four with Vacation, because it's almost like group therapy when you watch that. And I think with his films, particularly why they've always endured is they keep finding younger audiences, which is pretty amazing to me. And I can tell you this, Ash, the last time I did speak to John, it was very sad, but I, I spoke to him in 1987. He called me with John Candy on the phone. And we literally just hung out on the phone and just telling stories and talking and laughing, making each other laugh. And it was incredible. And he did bring it up at that time. He was toying with the idea of, you know, a sequel and, and kind of finding them in their adulthood with families and their new careers. And we're, you know, so that idea was of interest to him. It was something that he was contemplating. Wow. Do you have a memoir? No, but I should write one eventually, I think. I yeah. feel like you probably have so many good stories that are just like living in your brain that I but there would are. read. I appreciate that. Uh, there are. And even though I'm getting up there, like I'm 53 now, but I feel like I want to just live a little more life and do more before I do that. But I'm open to that. I wouldn't mind. I, yeah, I just want to hear like all your like John Hughes stories and all your stories about all these sets. Like I would read the hell out of that. I'm going to write the book now. You did say you're very forward thinking. Is there an actor or filmmaker that you have not worked with yet that you would just almost instantly say yes, just because they're in it. Danny McBride is one of them. I love Danny. Yes. I love that guy. I really do. I love, that's what I mean. I loved all their shows. I actually auditioned for a couple of their shows. I think it was Eastbound and Down and one of the other ones. He comes to mind because that, that question has been brought to my attention in the last couple of weeks. He's somebody I'd love, I would love to work with. I'd love to do more comedies. I've always loved Sandler. I feel like he's great. I love Will Ferrell. I love all the comedians. SNL is such an interesting thing. It was such a great training ground, but Again, over the years, like the women too, the men and the women off of the show have been great. Like Kate McKinnon, there's so many talented people that have done that show and do it well. So I would love to do some comedies in the near future. That'd be fun too. I think um, the first season of East Down and Down is one of the most perfect seasons of television of all time. I think it's well, so funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, what did you audition for in that show? I, I honestly can't remember which part it was, but I, I remember auditioning, I think one, if not two of their shows. Yeah, because I love their stuff. They were great. And they're very just cool guys too. I remember when I sat down with David a couple of years back, he was telling me that they had recently moved back to South Carolina. All the guys in their crews, a lot of them, they'd gone to college together. I mean, they're just super chill, down to earth guys um, that really have fun with the work. I'm awed by it, I really, because when I saw the film, I had been, honestly, I was as excited as anybody to see this movie, you know? And I saw it with my wife for the first time at, at Blumhouse a couple of weeks ago and I was like, oh. you know, and she was like this. <laughs> I bet, so, some of, the, some of it's like, brutal 
Yeah, no, it is. It is. But fun too. I mean, that's what I mean from an audience perspective. That's they really delivered. I think fans of this franchise are going to flip out, and I think it will attract new people too because it's a well-made film. Well, it's it's been such a pleasure to talk to you. I, I won't take up too much more of your time, but I really appreciate this conversation and this movie. Just it's so much fun. That's great, Ash. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure, and it's great to meet you.